as I say, this particular feature came in by email. Obviously, our first step to, was to arrange an interview and actually go out to see Laurie in her studio out at Woolsthorpe. And I took along with us um, a young lady called Carly Shooksmith, who's been working here as an intern. Uh, Carly is an architecture graduate who would really like to work uh, within publishing uh, and within the historic house setting. So I thought this was a, a perfect opportunity to take Carly out as well uh, to see how we, how we put features together. And um, you've just been appointed the new artist in residence for Beaver Castle. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I, it just occurred to me back in April that I should uh, maybe... I wanted to create a sculpture park or a sculpture trail somewhere. And um, if you don't have tons of land of your own or tons of money of your own to do that, uh, just go and buy 20 acres somewhere and do it. <laughs> um, I just thought I'd better approach people who, ha who were landowners yeah. and who might have an interest in, I don't know, uh, creating a buzz around their estate or their place. So I called up the National Trust and I called up the Historic Houses Association and ended up calling a bunch of different historic houses in this area. I was interested in coming near Lincoln because okay. I had been offered a place on the MRES course to do a PhD. And uh, so I called up various houses and um, offered to Beaver Castle, you know, free consulting on the subject of Sculpture Parker and uh, Her Grace the Duchess of Rutland, basically. Um, we agreed that uh, being artist in residence was a good way forward on that. Yeah, and uh, Sculpture Parks is something you've done before in Montana where you previously lived, so. I, I initiated a sculpture trail there by, by creating one sculpture in one area which is meant to be the first of many around a whole sort of area much bigger than this one, I must yeah. say. <laughs> Here it's going to be a two-mile loop. Uh, over there is more like a 200-mile, um, you know, sort of trail. So here in the UK, I was thinking, my vision is to offer an opportunity to lots of young people, or older people if they're students. I mean, you know, to tell you the truth, is there's no sort of discrimination yeah. against anybody. It's like anybody who wants to apply can apply, pretty much, to create works made from old stuff right. and raw stuff, right? So basically a sustainable sculpture trail. And the sculptures don't have to last for more than a year because they can get skipped again at the end, right? right? Yeah. But each time it's an opportunity for someone to, if they've never made a sculpture outdoors or a large sculpture, to be mentored by somebody who already has done that type of stuff. Yeah. I remember when I first made my first sculpture, I would have wished somebody could have held my hand <laughs> a little bit, you know, to make it. Yeah. So here there's an opportunity for these people to come here to Beaver, to Lincolnshire, and to create a big work made from recycled or reclaimed materials, which is sustainable, which is green, which is make, gets them thinking instead of making sculptures with materials that are maybe, you know, detrimental to our planet to make stuff yeah. with stuff. Yeah. I suppose it's completely different to doing a bus because this the sculpture is going to be outside for the whole Completely year. Completely so different. Yeah, it's a totally di different kettle of fish. Well. I mean, a bust is a small contained thing. You know, you have, you, you have, it's, it's a small object, even if it's a person's head, it's yeah. larger. This was a little beagle, uh, a little beagle's bust. But, but basically, you know, which I'm, I'm still kind of working on, it hasn't, it's not quite finished. Um, it's one of those in progress things. But uh, yeah, no, doing large scale things. Can you imagine like, if, for example, if you were doing it with bottles, or if you were doing it with um, disused furniture, or tires that are that that are either not good to begin yeah. with, not well properly made, or yeah. that have been used and broken, I've seen the most amazing artwork that you can create using old materials and creating a new shape with them, giving new yeah. life to them. It's pretty amazing. So you're really hoping that with a, a variety of different people, they'll bring different materials, different styles of work. It's bound to be a seriously interesting yeah. variety of things because, you know, there'll be students from all over the UK. We've already had people from the, sl you know, from the Slade, a master's degree student from the Slade. I've had a young girl from Scotland who uh, asked me, you know, she said she wasn't doing GCSE, she was doing whatever their equivalent is up there or whatever of art yeah. and um, asked if she could be part of the competition. And yeah, so we're hoping everybody's going to come up with their own take of what they could make and create. The trail is going to extend from the Dirty Duck, 
which is a pub. It's actually, it's actually also called the Rutland Arms. <laughs> so it's called the Rutland Arms and the Dirty Duck. It's a huge old pub that's on the edge of the canal in the, you know, the yeah. Grantham Canal, yeah. the one that yeah. goes from uh, Grantham to Nottingham. And so it's going to be a loop. It's a two mile loop, hopefully, like just on the edge of the canal, over a bridge, through a bunch of fields and back. It's one of those things, right now, it's already a rec recreational area, you yeah. know? I yeah. go for a walk every day, I have a dog, take my dog for a walk, people are bicycling down that trail, moms are pushing prams, you know? And uh, yeah, so it's going to be very much a rural country walk. And then around a corner, oops, there's another new piece of sculpture, you know? Yeah. Ooh, wow, something else. Which is also why it would be so interesting for the materials to be raw and reclaimed to fit in with that kind of the surroundings yeah. that to be in. And you know, at the end of the day, I think to myself, if even one kid or one person walking past there stops throwing their crisp bags because they think, ooh, you know, gee, you know, garbage, art, yeah. maybe, you know, it's better not to kind of destroy, I don't know, you know, if you could have people just being a little bit more careful about their environment yeah. as a result of being awakened or sensitized further to the idea of an environmental concern, yeah. I think that's a good thing. So, uh, in addition to the sculpture trial, you're also doing the busts of um, the Duchess's children. Could you maybe? Yeah. Talk well, about that too? the Duke and the Duchess have five children. So basically, I've started to do the portrait of uh, the middle child. Actually, she's a lovely girl. Um, she's thirteen, uh, Lady Eliza. So I've started to do her portrait. You know, I've done a lot of portraits. That's one of the things I've specialized in. I've done. Uh, portraits of John Travolta and wow. <laughs> other famous people and I've also done a lot of people who are not famous. Um, I was really lucky. Um, the Association of Tennis Professionals had contracted uh, Hill & Knowlton, which is a PR company in London. And they wanted to do a big splash about um, Master Cup Shanghai. Okay. Um, so this was basically the top eight tennis players in the world. So that, was, that was a stroke of good luck in a sense being asked to do the top eight tennis players in the world. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun and uh, the sculptures were made larger than life size, like as wow. if they were the terracotta warriors, but they were tennis terracotta warriors. So I got Andy Murray, who didn't actually make the cut. He was one, one, wasn't one of the eight okay. that got selected, but he was one of the 20 who possibly could have been selected. So I got to meet them all and photograph them and measure them. And I used his body to pattern the body of all the Warriors. Oh, okay. Wow. He was the one who posed for me. Yeah. So that's that's quite a different. Doing busts is one thing, and then another thing is doing large-scale sculptures for cities. So I've done some in Ireland and Vietnam, and you know, just different places. Yeah. But um, here, this whole trail idea that I have for here, it's a bit different. Instead of making permanent large-scale works that would cost a huge amount of money. And in this day and age with this economy, it's not exactly easy, yeah. is it, to finance or to, to, to find the kind of money for that sort of a sculpture trail. So actually, um, I've been quite concerned for some time with creating work with sustainable materials. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. With materials yeah. that are reclaimed, recycled, or raw. And I'm calling it the three R's because even though three R's is traditionally reading, writing, and arithmetic, and here we have, you know, reclaimed, recycled, and raw, I still think that either way, it communicates the idea of basics. And, and I think yeah. sometimes the basics in art or the basics in education are, you know, they are really truly overlooked as being what they are, which is the foundation. Yeah. And I think here, sometimes people are asked to run before they can walk. And I think it's a really good idea to walk with a, a sculpture outside when you're being helped by somebody who's already done one it's a bit easier than if you just said here Carly go off and make a sculpture here in bronze <laughs> and we'll give you a 30,000 pound budget yeah here it's a you know very I had a very interesting morning uh, with Laurie and one of the ideas she has had was that um, she would maybe be able to set up for us that we could go along and meet uh, Her Grace, the Duchess of Rutland, because obviously it's been her inspiration as well uh, to appoint Laurie as artist in residence. We were very fortunate to be granted that opportunity and we went along to interview the Duchess. Um, I just wanted to ask you, Your Grace, why did you respond to Laurie's correspondence? 
Well, I, if you know Laurie, you know she's a pretty inspiring lady. And she wrote to me, I think emailed, and it came through to the office. And then it was passed through, because I also love um, art and I adore people like her with her energy. Yes. And I think she went to look at various estates in the area. And we just kind of hit it off. And I thought, what a wonderful project to be able to facilitate something like this. And the magic of living in these great landed estates with all these properties is that you can partner up with people and help things happen. Yes, and it takes someone with that sort of drive to make it happen, doesn't yes, it? Yes, and I think most probably I'm very f busy with a full-on life and someone that can run with it and has the drive and enthusiasm mm -hmm. to really make it happen. And I think I saw that in Laurie, that yes. she wasn't going to need me spoon-feeding her. Yes. She will take the reins and make it happen. Yes. And from your point of view, it's a unique opportunity for this generation to, to make a lasting legacy for the estate. What do you hope that legacy will be? Well, I think another thing that, again, has happened, has evolved since I've lived here, which is 10 years now yeah. in the castle, is that um, it's a great privilege to be living in this heritage and being custodians of this history. And the other thing that is very, very important to me is that we had the opportunity of leaving behind a community that surrounds our home that we re-engage with, we reinvest in, in the different ways to possibly the past. But what we can do is we can partner with the best in the world. And I think what we've been able to do with Laurie is partner with one of the best sculpturists is in the world.